Hello and welcome to another Leak Code video. Today we're going to be doing the problem of the day for June 22nd, best time to buy and sell stock with transaction fee. And actually in this problem, I'm going to go over uh, all of the solutions. So I'm going to start with the memorization, then do the bottom up and then finally do the optimal um, bottom up solution. And this is going to be kind of similar to my house robber problem that I've done. So you should be familiar a little bit with dynamic programming and I'm going to go over this problem. Okay. So we have a prices array where we have one, three, two, eight, four, nine, and then we have some fee. And we are allowed to buy and sell stock as many times as we want, but every time we sell stock, we have to pay the fee. We're trying to figure out what's the maximum we can make here. Okay, and so they're saying the maximum is if you buy at one and then you sell at eight, Right, so then you would make seven profit minus two. Then you would buy at four. So buy at four for four, and then you sell at nine. So you'd buy for four. And actually it'd be like this. So if we buy at four and we sell at nine, we would make a five profit minus two. And so here our total profit is five plus three, which is eight. Okay. And so the main thing you have to notice with all these buy and sell stock problems, I've done a few of them, is pretty much all of them are either dynamic, pro I think actually pretty much all of them are dynamic programming. And that's because we have a series of states, right? And basically just like all of these problems just, just change in like how many states you have. Like some of them have a delay, some of them have a fee, but all of them are kind of boiled down to the same thing. And then what they boil down to is you have some index that you're in and then you have some other state. And in this case, so if we're buying and selling stock, well, we don't really wanna obviously, we, we're never gonna wanna buy and sell the stock for the same day, right? So like if we buy here, we're never gonna wanna sell for that same day because then we'd make a zero profit. So we're always gonna wanna buy and then sell sometime later. So we have to have an index where we're at and then we have to have a some kind of variable to show are we holding or are we not holding stock. So let's call that H. So like when we buy stock, we're going to be holding it in the future. And when we sell stock, we're not going to be holding. And so these are going to be the states for our dynamic programming. And it's pretty straightforward. If you think about like what, what we have to do at every state, right? So let's say we are at some index and we are holding stock. Well, what, what are the options we have for holding stock? We can either sell the stock. If we sell the stock, our profit is the profit at this index minus the fee plus the next day. And so the next day would just be DP of I plus one. And then, so if we're holding and we sold, then we're not gonna be holding, right? So we'll just call it maybe not an NH or something. Okay. And so that's one thing we can do. We can either sell the stock or we can choose to keep holding the stock and then check the DP in the next day, right? So that's that's pretty much our dynamic program relation if we're holding stock. So the, the other case will just be DP of i plus one and we are holding the stock again okay so that should be pretty straightforward like yeah this is like a pretty simple dynamic program problem like like if you've done some you know that should be understandable and so this is going to be and then we try to get the max here right so we try to get the max of these two and then that is if we are holding stock now let's say we're not holding stock Okay, well, what are our options? And this is kind of what you want to do for DP. Um, you want to figure out like what are all the states we're in and what are all your options for each state and what are you trying to maximize? So we're trying to maximize profit, which means we're going to try to maximize this if we're holding stock. If we're not holding stock, what are the options we have? Well, we can either buy the stock, right? So if we buy the stock, then what's our profit? Our profit is negative P of I because we are buying it. So we lost some money plus DP, you know, and then we keep going to the next index. And now we are holding the stock. And then the other option is we just don't do anything for the day and we just go on to the next state. We are not holding. And we try to maximize here. And so that's pretty much the, the whole DP is you just try to figure out what state you're in. Are we holding stock? Are we not holding stock? And then what are the two options we have? So we can either do nothing or we can sell if we have stock or we can buy if we don't. And our base case is on pretty, straight, pretty straightforward as well. Once we reach the end of this P array, then what should we return, right? Regardless of if we're holding or not holding stock, we're going to return zero because we can no longer buy or sell. 
And so that's gonna be basically all for the DP. So I'm actually gonna code up the top down problem and then we're gonna to try to figure out how to go to the next parts of the problem. I don't wanna focus too much on how to code the top down because there's there's like a ton of, you know, this is like a pretty straightforward top down problem. So I'm gonna focus most of my time on figuring out how we actually get the bottom up and then how we get the next, uh, how we get the optimal solution. So we have a visited here and then remember our states and our DP are index. And then if we're holding or not holding, so we can just call that holding. And so here we need to define DP. Now what we need to do here is we need to say if the index equals the length of the prices, then we need to return zero because we can't do anything else. And then as always, if index holding in visited, return visited, index holding and then uh so now we have our two states right so if we are holding what can we do well it's pretty straightforward so we are going to actually put that here so if we're holding we can do one of two things right we can either do nothing in which case we just move on to the next index and we are still holding so we'll call that holding and then the other case is we can sell. So if we sell, what's our profit? Well, it's prices at the index minus the fee plus DP of the next state. And now we are not holding. So we can just say not, or we can just put it put in a zero, right? So our holding is gonna be a one or zero, so, okay. So now we can even put a one here if we want to, okay. And so now what are we doing next? Well. Let's think about it. So our next state is if we're not holding, so else. And then this is gonna be kind of similar as well. So if we're not holding, then first we can just do nothing, in which case we would just pass a zero again, right? If we're not holding, we wanna be not holding again. And then the second state is we buy. So if we buy, then we lost money. Well, how much did we lose? We lost the price that we bought it for. There is no fee now. And now we are holding. And so that's pretty much that. Now we just return and then we can simply call our DP. And so, like I said, as far as, as far as um, the, the complexity of like the dynamic programming solution, this should be pretty straightforward if you've been setting some dynamic programming, it's not tricky at all. Okay, so now we just return the DP. What index do we start at? We start at index zero and are we holding at the beginning? No, actually we could optimize this a little bit yeah, so let's do that. So let's actually optimize this a little bit and let's use a Boolean instead of an integer. I guess we save a little bit of um, space there. So let's just say false. And let's just say if holding, then we could do holding. We could do not holding. Otherwise we can do uh, holding and we can do not holding. It should reverse it, I think. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so now we have one solution, and as you can see, it's not super efficient. Like, so so time and space complexity, actually, it's pretty efficient. However, just because this problem's been out for a while, like the other solution does a lot better. And so let's think about what that would be like, and let's do the time and space for this one. So here, the time is pretty straightforward. We have how many states? We have index times holding states. So that's gonna be length of prices. Let's just call that P times two, because holding can either be one or zero. So that's just gonna be O of P or O of N. And then space is also going to be O of P or O of N because it's going to have index times holding states where holding can either be zero or one. Now, the nice thing is we're actually going to do the bottom up here. And what we're going to do is for the bottom up, it's really easy to tell the space and time because you literally have arrays. And so you can just say like, okay, if I have a one, one dimensional array, then like, I know I'm, I know I'm big O of N and so on. Where for this, it's a little bit trickier. So definitely when you do the bottom up, it's a lot easier to do the space and time. So what we can actually do by looking at this code, right? So let me uncomment it actually. So what we can actually do at this code is we can see this recursive state and we can actually build a bottom up solution using these exact like ideas. Like as you can see that something at state I takes the items at state I plus one, right? It just takes the max of the two things at state I plus one. So we can literally do this the same way as we did this, only now we could use arrays. And so we could use arrays and we can have an initial state. And that's gonna be pretty straightforward. All we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to make two arrays, right? Because we have a holding and a not holding. 
So we're going to have holding equals an array. And this is going to be length prices plus one. And then we are also going to have a non holding array, which is going to be the same thing. And the thing you want to notice is our base case is going to be when prices is out of bounds. That's why we have this plus one. So when prices is out of bounds, they're going to both be zero. Now we just simply go from the end to the front and we just use this exact, pretty much this exact code to, to make these two arrays. And that would be the bottom up solution. So let's do that. So it's going to be for uh, I in range length of prices. And then we're going to be going backwards here, right? It's bottom up. So minus one, minus one, minus one. Now we just do holding equals. We can literally copy like this code and just change instead of DP, we can change it around a little bit, right? So what is this going to be? So for holding, this is just going to be holding at the next index. That's going to be one. And then it's literally the same thing, right? So for holding, we can sell. And then this is going to be not holding at the next index. Okay, so that's literally the bottom up. And then let's we have to do that for the other one too. So and we're literally going to copy this code again. And like I said, it's pretty much the same thing. So instead of this DP index plus one, now it's just going to be uh, not holding at index plus one. And then it's literally going to be the same thing where if we're not holding, we can buy. And then now we're in the next index and in, in holding. So holding. Uh, this, this should be i plus one, by the way, not index plus one. So that's the other thing I need to change. So i, i, i. This is a plus. Okay, and so now, now that we have these two arrays recursively made, so let's actually comment out this code. So from the memoization, like I didn't even draw, I didn't even draw the bottom up because it's literally the same code. Like you can just figure out that like, okay, we're literally taking like the next element. So we can do the same thing here, except now instead of taking the next element, we're taking the pre, we're, we're going backwards. Okay. And now, well, what do we need to return? Well, we actually need to return not holding at index zero because we're not holding to begin with. So we can just return not holding at index zero. Let's hopefully I did that right. Um, let's see here. Um, I1 plus one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Prices I. Oh, right. So this should be holding I, and this should be not holding I. Okay. So while this does run a little bit faster, it's actually the same time complexity. And so this is actually going to be the time complexity of O of P and space O of P. And now you can clearly see that like we have two arrays of length, length P. And so that's going to be O of P. And then we're, we're just going back through them one time. Okay. So now last step, finally, now that we have this memoization solution, we have this bottom up solution. That's pretty much the same as the memoization solution. Now you can recognize just like in the house robber that actually holding and not holding at every single index relies on holding and not holding only at the next index. And so when that's the case, when you have a bottom up solution that you only need like the next index or the next few, you don't actually need to store the entire array, right? We can just store the, we can just store one value and then we could, we could base the previous value off of that value, right? So we can just store something like, let's say we have holding I and we have not holding I. Well, now to get the value before i, right? So now for at index i minus one, we can just use these two values and then store that. And so, yeah, we only need to store like we don't need to store the entire array because both of these are only are only dependent on the value after them. So we can just refactor this code to instead of using this whole array, we can just use just one number for each. And so let's do that. So we're going to initialize them to be zero, and this is literally going to be the same code. So we're doing all, this is all the same. Now, instead of using this index, all we have to do is, I'm actually gonna write it like this because in Python, otherwise I'd have to make a temporary variable. So I'm actually gonna initialize them at the same time because then otherwise I'd need a temporary variable because they're gonna get overridden otherwise. So I'm gonna do something like this. I'll have a little comma here. 
and then something like this where I initialize them like this. And so instead of these indexes, it's literally just going to be holding, not holding, not holding, and holding. Okay, and let's see if, and now this is just not holding. Oh, let's see. Okay, it's giving me this indent initial. It's just, it's, so, it's kind of long code, but it's okay. I'll just do this. Oh, let's see. Okay, so this is not, not remember this is not an index, it's just the value now. We're just, in, we're just initializing them right away. And so now you can see that this works as well. And so this is like the optimal solution because now we are still ha we are still doing this length p for time, but now we have space of one because we just have these two variables. And so that's a that's a kind of a common technique, and it's going to be common in harder problems because in harder problems, let's say you have an array of like length a thousand, right, of the dynamically programmed like bottom up array, but you actually only need like the previous ten elements or so. Well, to save space, instead of have instead of storing the array of length a thousand, you can just use that small array of length ten and just make sure you loop enough to get to the first element. So that this is going to be like, and I think in like stone game or something, this was used in combination with a bottom up dynamic programming. So if you could do this for a simple solution where you only have, you know, the next index that you're using, you should be able to do it for the next couple as well. And so hopefully uh, that makes sense to you. And this is kind of like how you go from the top down to the bottom up to the, you know, optimized bottom up. You probably want to code the top down because that's going to be the easiest then like if you can't code the top down at all, you're gonna really struggle. So I, so I usually code the top down, then I kind of figure out, okay, what's the recurrence relation and what's that gonna look like in the bottom up array? And it's pretty similar, like you might have to traverse backwards or forwards, but it's pretty much the same code. And then you can figure out, okay, can I optimize this even further to not even hold the array? So this is basically like the house robber for this. And all these stock problems are pretty similar where they all use that dynamic programming. And so that's gonna be all for this problem. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.